Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. Senate Bill 299 establishes the Kentucky Horse Racing and Gaming Corporation. The topic of the Kentucky Racing Commission has been discussed and its structure has been discussed for several years. Uh, ever since we moved from strict live horse racing and, and started evolving into different forms of even, even horse racing, whether it be simulcasting, advanced deposit wagering, certainly with HHR uh, expansion, uh, the, the topic has, has continued to increase and, and the, uh, the discussion has continued to increase. Um, over the last 20, well, excuse me, last 12 years, the, the money that has, is now transacted through the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission has expanded almost eight times. Uh, and yet the structure has not changed in any way, shape, or form. At that same time, the monies that are transacted through charitable gaming have increased dramatically, over 30% in the last couple of years, with expected double-digit increases over the next two years. With the addition of historical horse racing machines, the addition of sports betting, issues or legislation that we have contemplated within this body and statutes that we have changed within this body, it, it is imperative that we now have a commission, a, an oversight body, that is commensurate with that type of, of obligation, and that is to ensure that Kentucky gaming, regardless of what form, is operated at the highest level of integrity um, and is in its most accountable form. So what this bill will do is move the regulatory functions of the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission, along with its accompanying duties of regulating all paramutual wagering as long with sports wagering into the corporation effective July 1 of 24 this year. Um, it does maintain the current board that is, um, that is, is in place now for continuity purposes. The, the board that uh, is, is uh, in place right now, which is, is an outstanding board, I, I will tell you. It, it, they've, they've done a very good job of, of putting this board together. Uh, it is a good board, so for continuity purposes, uh, this board will be stayed for two years, as will the uh, executive director, um, will be named the, the president of the, of the new board. Effective July 1 of 2025, charitable gaming will move under the umbrella of this organization. Uh, the entirety of char the Charitable Gaming Commission will move under the umbrella of this commission. Uh, there's, uh, there's been some concerns that have been uh, voiced to me and, and uh, some others uh, in the body about what impact this might have on charitable gaming. Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, with one small exception, this will have no impact on, on charitable gaming. Uh, any existing operation uh, that is currently licensed in the Commonwealth uh, with a charitable gaming license will be grandfathered in and will continue to allow them to operate. It will allow them to update their machines, replace their machines, uh, do everything that they are currently doing under the existing structure. Um, this bill exclusively uh, or explicitly excludes any type of uh, bingo or paper pull tabs, the things that our church picnics uh, do, the things that uh, maybe uh, booster clubs for athletics use to raise money, uh, those would all be exactly the same as they are before. The only change, contemplated change in this bill would be that on July 1 of this year, there will be a moratorium placed on the expansion, the new issuance of electronic pull, uh, pull tabs which operate much like a, an HHR machine or a slot machine or any other type of gaming machine. Um, those will be, there will be a moratorium placed on those until the body, or until the commission uh, transitions into uh, the new regulatory body. So until July 1 of 2025, uh, the reason we delayed implementation of, of uh, the charitable gaming portion, uh, twofold, or actually multifold uh, for that matter, uh, initially in communications with Charitable Gaming Commission itself through the governor's office, uh, they believed it was going to take them longer than the July 1 of 24 to, to make that transition. 
Uh, so the, the governor's office, uh, through or charitable gaming through the governor's office, asked us to, to delay implementation on that. Uh, additionally, there were some other concerns um, that, that were voiced by uh, some other charitable organizations, uh, Catholic Conference, uh, that, uh, that they, made, uh, they wanted to make sure that we weren't doing anything that would have uh, unintended consequences. So they wanted us to take the interim, which seemed like a logical step uh, to, uh, uh, to take the interim to study the, the transition of the, uh, the charitable gaming uh, portion of it just to make sure that we're not causing any uh, unintended consequences. Um, but that said, I do believe that there's an acknowledgement that the uh, charitable gaming, as in 2022, handled over $532 million um, in, in gambling receipts. Um, and as of, as of right now, um, there's no oversight in that body that requires criminal background checks, uh, subject to ethics rules, things like that. So I do believe that it's important to bring those uh, those all under the same umbrella, which most states do. Kentucky has been a, a bit of an outlier in this area um, for, for years, and that is because it has been so heavily dominated uh, almost exclusively by, uh, by horse racing. And so um, uh, it is now that, uh, now that there are other forms of gambling, it does make sense for us to do uh, much what uh, other states have done as far as having racing and gaming commissions that all operate under the same um, under the same umbrella. As I said, this bill will stay the existing board members uh, for two years at at the uh, end of those that two year period or at the time that vacancies occur on the current board, there will be um, a, a set of qualifiers that the, the governor will still maintain the appointments. Uh, this will be a municipal corporation, but the governor will still have the appointments. Um, those, all of those appointees shall come from a pool of people that represent different facets of, uh, of the industry, whether that be horse racing, whether that be uh, charitable gaming, whether that be uh, uh, people that are experts in uh, online technologies, um, other forms of gambling, sports wagering. Uh, they would all be represented on the board and they would have to be picked, um, they would be given guardrails on, on those selections. Uh, each of those members would go through a, uh, have to go through a background check. Each of those members would uh, be subject to, um, to um, the ethics, uh, ethics laws and ethics commission. That's something that's actually been discussed on this floor for, for several years, the importance of bringing um, uh, the, the commission under ethics laws. And um, the chair and the vice chair of the corporation would be subject to Senate confirmation um, as an additional measure of, uh, of scrutiny. There is a committee sub on this bill. Mr. Speaker, if you could have the clerk report House Committee Substitute 1. Mr. Clerk, please report. House Committee Substitute 1 to Senate Bill 299. Gentleman from Odom. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the, the committee sub that um, that was ad adopted uh, the other day is, uh, was, was to address some concerns that were expressed in the Senate committee uh, and when we had the joint committee. Uh, the most significant of those changes were uh, at the, um, uh, with discussions with the gentleman from Lasky uh, and the gentleman from, uh, from Breckenridge. There was some concern about the, uh, the vague use of the term gaming, that it might, uh, it, it might in some way be used to to authorize things that were not specifically uh, already authorized by the, the General Assembly through statute. This removed every reference to that word, to that term uh, of gaming or other gaming uh, that was in the bill uh, to alleviate those concerns. Uh, it revised the moratorium language. Uh, this is a, at the request of uh, charitable gaming, uh, revised the moratorium language to make sure that uh, it was clear that traditional bingos, paper pull tabs, uh, those types of um, uh, forms of charitable gaming were not impacted by the moratorium we placed on it. Um, it um, um, added that the public protection cabinet will participate in the transition uh, to the Kentucky Horse Racing Corporation uh, from the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission. All the assets of the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission would be transferred with that. Uh, and at the, um, uh, there was a, a, 
a change made to delete some language in the charitable gaming portion of it with using discretionary licensing that the Catholic Conference asked um, to, um, to alleviate a concern. We made that change. Um, so if there are no questions on the committee sub, I would move. Uh, <laughs> 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 on second thought. Yeah, I would, I would move adoption of House Committee Substitute 1.